Hey everyone, welcome to the PFF Betting Podcast. I am your host, Kendall Valenzuela, joined with me as always, PFF data scientist Ben Brown, and we are recapping the Sunday that was in the NFL and breaking down our favorite player props for the two Monday games that we get tonight. So let's get into it. Football fans, I'm sure we all love an action-packed, high-scoring NFL game. But with the latest no-brainer from DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, you'll be a winner once a single point is scored. New customers who bet just $1 on any team to score can win $100 in free bets. It's just that simple. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you can still get in on the NFL action. Everyone can play for huge cash prizes all season long with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports Contest. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code PFF. Bet $1 on any team to score and win $100 in free bets if they score. You score with promo code PFF this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit and $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, Ben, we have waited as long as we could to get this podcast out, and we still really have no clear-cut answers as to, especially for the Raiders and the Browns game. We don't really have a ton of answers as to um, who's playing at quarterback. We we don't know if it's Case, if it's going to be Baker. Um, They have until 2 p.m. Eastern today to make any transactions for their 5 p.m. kickoff. So we will preface this with these props saying, We don't have the information we would like, so we're kind of going to give everyone listening um, a little bit of an idea of where we're at with props, and you guys may have to wait a little bit to see where they land. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's basically it, right? So we pushed the podcast back three different times trying to get some, uh, you know, action on this uh, Raiders-Browns game. We just haven't had Mm -hmm. uh, really any information come through based on what we've had, you know, two days ago. So like you said, 2 p.m. Eastern is kind of like the cutoff time. I don't think we're going to see... Uh, too many books posting player props until that time. I think right now we really only have like three in the player props tool or something like that. So uh, it's a spot to definitely wait. And I think uh, that is kind of the takeaway for me uh, on the game spread and total as well, right? We have okay. seen it basically uh, for Cleveland. It opened up right around minus six and a half uh, with all the COVID situation right before, uh, you know, we got the information that the game was going to be moved. It moved all the way to uh, Raiders like minus three. So pretty significant swing. It is all the way back to Browns minus three. I do think if Baker is back in, uh, we should see that move off of three more towards four, you know, minus five. But uh, it's really tough because this is kind of one of the first situations where we've seen uh, people who, you know, tried to, you know, front run the news or get ahead of the news or try and get a good number. Like, for instance, on the Las Vegas Raiders, uh, when the Browns injury situation was coming out, uh, they are kind of uh, hurting or underwater now, right? If you yeah. bought into the Raiders basically uh, at plus three previously um, or even like plus two or something like that when the line was continuing to shift in their direction, uh, you're kind of maybe a little upset because, you know, the game was moved and now things have kind of reset back toward that. So maybe it's something to think about. I do know uh, people, you know, obviously want to bet early and then they want to take advantage of that line movement. But uh, this is kind of a new precedence for us, so it might be something to at least reevaluate as we move toward the end of the season if there is potential for uh, you know a game to be pushed back because of COVID. So, And what do you see this game kind of looking like? It's hard to even ask you that question because we don't know who's at quarterback or anything. But if you could give a best guess, because I think even for me, if, even if Baker Mayfield and a ton of his teammates are cleared to play, tonight I just don't I don't know if it's a trust thing with Cleveland tonight because they've just gone through so much and as much as as the Raiders have been super disappointing this season um, and they still don't have Darren Waller 
they haven't had multiple important pieces have to be in quarantine the last few days. And I just think they might come in with more of a chip on their shoulder because they were pissed when it got moved. Right, so right. I don't I, I don't know how you're looking at it. Yeah, definitely. There's a number of narratives for how, uh, you know, who who's motivated, who's not. Obviously, the Cleveland Browns had uh, kind of, you know, situations broke correctly for them to at least be uh, relevant in the AFC playoff race yesterday, too. So I think they are uh, a much better coach team, too. Obviously, really high on Kevin Stefanski. So uh, with the Raiders situation, Rich Bisaccia, they haven't really shown too much since, since John Gruden got fired, since the Henry Ruggs situation. So I can see them, even if they are pissed, not necessarily uh, still showing up in a lot of ways. So I do think the Raiders are a really tough team to back. I think I definitely think if Baker uh, is in and you don't see this line move uh, any further in the direction that Cleveland is definitely uh, the play at minus three. Okay. Uh, the, over, the total 41 uh, points, you know, it's tough, right? Because we still don't know the exact players for as far as who's going to yeah. be in for the Cleveland Browns. So uh, it is difficult. I know we talked about a couple player props. Yeah. Uh, I was really I was really holding out hope for, uh, you know, something like a Hunter Renfro reception prop who's been on an absolute mm-hmm. terror. PFF's betting model uh, does like Renfro under 77.5 receiving yards. But okay. I think... I think he's he's a guy that I'm still going to be looking for to get a high high volume of targets in this offense. So if he's looking at you know six and a half, okay. uh, even seven and a half, I kind of like him going over here a little bit. So that's that's kind of where I'm at at least from the Raiders side uh, from a player props perspective. I'm wondering, okay. do you have any you know do you have I, any anytime touchdowns or yeah, any thoughts on the matter? And it's not and it's not sexy. That's the thing. So sprinkle it where you can. But I think Nick Chubb, especially with Kareem Kareem. Hunt is still going to be out. He's got that ankle injury too. So I think Chubb is likely, obviously, to get more touches there. But he's usually the focal point, obviously, of that Browns offense when everyone's healthy. So I think, too, if Cleveland is forced to play Mullins at quarterback, uh, like I think Chubb is just taking on even more responsibility. So I would hammer that. It's just a thing. It's a waiting game right now, Ben, right? right? I mean, what what would you be – would you even be comfortable – like setting a line for his rushing yards, knowing that Hunt is out? Yeah, I think it'll be probably, yeah, like 92.5, 93.5 okay. or something like that is probably what he's going to be up uh, close to. I think from like uh, PFS fantasy projections, we have mm-hmm. him, I'll check that real quick, we have him probably, uh, you know, 85.8. I do think we probably okay. just been a little bit lower on him yeah. uh, so far I mean, when we do been, our initial projections. So, yeah, he has yeah. been limited. So I would say probably 90, you know, 90, okay. 92.5 is probably where it's going to come in at. And that's, you know, kind of tough to uh, to fade, right? We do have, uh, you know, Las Vegas Raiders 16th overall and our opponent adjusted defensive grade and obviously really good from a pass rush perspective. Have been a little bit more vulnerable uh, in coverage, kind of in that, you know, cover three scheme. So uh, maybe that's a spot that the Browns could take advantage. But again, that comes down to who they have at quarterback uh, and kind of how they like playing offensively. So I like I like kind of maybe waiting a little bit, getting involved late with some player props, and then potentially uh, live betting it kind of based on the first couple of possessions. And that's when you'll kind of know uh, if the Raiders are you know showing up here and actually for real, if they're just going to kind of slog through this game, and you'll know uh, at least somewhat who's playing quarterback for the Cleveland Browns and how they look kind of at least running and moving uh, a somewhat efficient offense. So that's probably uh, my play uh, right, here like on Monday afternoon. Monday so. afternoon. I know. I think 5 p.m. Eastern kick. So right? we're yep, good to go. Yep. You know, a full, to another go. full day. Right? Um, all right. Any other ones you like? I feel like, you know, that sucks because that was going to be a good, we were excited for that game and then it got moved. So do you have any other ones you're kind of monitoring? Not a ton, right? I do yeah. think there's probably something there, you know, with the Cleveland Browns receiving situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it's maybe something we'll have to tweet out here yeah. uh, after that 2 p.m. Eastern spot or something like that. Hit I us, love it. Hit us up on Twitter. That's probably where we'll have to be at for sure. So. Okay, sounds good. Well, now we can move on to the Monday night, the original, the Monday night football game. That's between the Minnesota Vikings and Chicago Bears. Chicago kind of has a chance to play spoiler Ben for your your Minnesota Vikings. I can't remember if they're your. Team. I don't know if I can claim them anymore, <laughs> right? I think Eric E would probably like disown me if I actually I claimed so them. Too. I I definitely used to claim them, um, but they've been you know it's, it's a frustrating team to back, right? Six yeah. and seven, seven and six against the spread. Can't close anybody out. Uh, have been pretty efficient offensively, uh, defensively. They're definitely banged up, uh, you know, along the front four uh, and, and cornerback, right? Bashad Breeland uh, yeah. is now cut, so they're going to have Cameron Dantzler in there uh, at cornerback. 
Um, it's a t- it's a tough spot for uh, it's it's a tough spot for the Vikings covering six and a half points on the road in the division. Uh, I just don't see that happening too often. So I do think the the Bears plus six and a half. Okay. Also lean a little bit towards the under 44.5. Uh, I think that depends heavily on how Justin Fields plays against this defense that we have ranked as basically a league average unit. Uh, they are pretty strong up the middle with Harrison Smith, Eric Kendricks, those sorts of guys, but uh, are going to be really probably being able to be exposed on the outside. So uh, I like the Bears to cover. I like Justin Fields to you know kind of build on his performance from Monday night last week. Uh, and I think that they could potentially, I don't know if they win outright, but at a plus 237 price, uh, you know, PFF Greenlight's modeling definitely likes that. So uh, I think I might be sprinkling that in a okay. little bit here as well. So a bear, You're going for the Bears. I like going that. They have, they have a ton, it. talking about the COVID, I mean, they have a ton of players on the reserve list as well. So, right. and I think three, three, as of right now, three coordinators are in protocol. So right. that might be a tough one for them to win, but I like I like the enthusiasm. It the makes aggressiveness, sense. Right, the aggressiveness, right? Aggressiveness, because right. yeah, I, and for me, I guess the Minnesota Vikings are coming off a long break because they with the Steelers last Thursday night, and the Bears are coming off short rest. So I can see it though. The Minnesota Vikings just kind of. Yeah, Eric disowned them because they just they keep it close for no reason. Right. They just they they're just, not They don't want to step on anybody. They don't want to actually no. like, you know, throw the ball downfield to Justin Jefferson as often as they should. They're I sitting know. there, you know, pounding Delvin Cook into the into the ground, which kind of, you know, it definitely worked against it did. Um, it definitely works, worked against the Steelers, but it's just something that's not going to be uh, really sustainable every single game, week no. in and week out. So And I think yeah, Adam be, Thielen Adam Thielen is still questionable as we're filming this. I right. don't know if he's playing. So I guess I think my question he's, yeah, is, I think he he's on the play? doubtful side. I think uh, he's on the doubtful side of playing. To be honest with you, mm-hmm. yeah, Bears do have quite a bit on they, you know injured reserve as well. Yeah. Looks, or, or you know reserve COVID nineteen situation. So it is it is kind of a mess here uh, a mess. on Monday night. So. Well, especially because like their cornerback room, I th- I don't know who they have. So it was going to be good if Thielen was coming back, but even. Even if he's not, I feel like will Min- will Minnesota be aggressive through the air? And your answer to that is probably no. Probably not. I mean, maybe yeah. they will be a little bit more just because they have been, you know, more so on the road. But uh, it does sound like you know Thielen's trajectory has maybe changed a little bit here oh, on Monday okay. Night Football. Uh, he was listed as questionable uh, on Saturday here, um, so we'll see. Looking, okay. maybe he's more closer to a game time decision. Obviously, that impacts. Uh, things in the player prop market. I do think, you know, a guy like KJ Osborne then at 45.5 receiving yards, if you think Thielen's probably going to be able to go, uh, that's just way too high for yep. for a guy who's only gone over, you know, in two of seven games so far this season. And a couple of those have been because Adam Thielen uh, wasn't in the lineup. So I would definitely lean under on KJ okay. Osborne, especially if Thielen uh, does end up suiting up again. I still think he's probably more toward doubtful uh, than questionable, actually. But uh, we got to go with the statuses that the teams are providing us, and that's kind of where they have them, you know, playing at right now. So we waited as long as we could. We waited as long this. as we, could. we really we, did. Yeah. But another one you like is Justin Fields over one and a half passing touchdowns. I, yep. I love this. I, we're going back again, but he is so. Take it with a grain of salt. He is coming off his lowest, uh, his second lowest PFF passing grade of the season, but he did throw for two touchdowns for the first time this season. So you think yeah. he's going to do it again? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he had a couple big plays break, right? You yeah. know, the, the Jakeem Grant play obviously helped quite a bit. So uh, I still think it's a situation that he's going to be able to win somewhat downfield with Darnell Mooney. Uh, I think, you know, they're going to be somewhat productive moving the football at stretches throughout this game. So, uh, and, and I and expect them to cover and potentially win outright. So I got to go with Justin Fields. Uh, I do think that, uh, you know, the Vikings defense is going to be focused on trying to limit or stop David Montgomery as much as possible. And I do think that's going to open things up uh, for Fields in this passing game. If he gets, you know, any, even, even close to uh, an explosive pass play like he did last week, and I do think he's easily going to go over this 1.5, pro, you know, number. So at, uh, what is it, basically, like plus 182, plus 185, I think he needs to go over it, uh, you know, 35% of the time is the break-even percentage. So uh, much less than a coin flip. I do think that we have it happening right around 40% of the time. So okay. uh, I do like this one quite a bit. Of course, it's not going to happen every single time, but uh, <laughs> it should happen enough times to pay pay the bills here on Monday night, I guess. I like so. it. And like we said, the 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 Vikings are incapable of playing a game that doesn't right. come down to the wires. So right. it's not, if that's our expectation, then he'll, um, one and a half. I like it at the, at the plus price for sure. So Definitely. that's awesome. Another one we like too is, um, Cole Komet under 30 and a half receiving yards. So he, 
it was interesting when I read your article, and everyone, you can go read that at pff.com, but the target share has started to drop off, right, with Komet. He's at 16% team share the past four weeks. So you kind of see that as a trend now, and you're kind of fading him a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I do think, you know, with if everybody's back and healthy uh, mm-hmm. in that in that wide receiver room, he's going to definitely take, you know, a, a, a much less uh, target distribute or target share than what he has been mm-hmm. previously. Still on the field for you know basically all the snaps. I think he's running around on seventy five percent of dropbacks. But uh, I think with with the coverage situation of the Minnesota Vikings being really strong against tight ends, they have Harrison Smith, they have Eric Kendricks. Both those guys have been really successful throughout their entire career, uh, stopping or slowing down tight ends and running backs coming out of the backfield. So I think he's going to have a really tough time. I do think that you know Matt Nagy instead of trying to scheme Komet open is probably just going to use him more as a decoy option uh, and hopefully get some things involved to you know Darnell Mooney, Jakeem Grant, uh, maybe Allen Robinson. I do think he's still on the reserve COVID list, but I do think there are some uh, I think there is he is leaning towards playing here again um, on Monday night. So so I think Komet's going to take a little bit of a back seat, okay. probably be a little bit less involved from an actual target share perspective. And and if he is, you know, 30.5 receiving yards, this just is a really high number for him to get over. Definitely, so. definitely. And when, so they cut Rashad Breeland, which we know, and you said you you said before in the podcast, Cameron Dantzler is filling in. So does that really mean, like, is the, are the Bears going to look to find success maybe, like, more on the outside with Komet maybe being the third best option then if they're doing that? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's my expectation. I do okay. think that is uh, the weak point of the Vikings, you know, coverage units. So, you know, if 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 the Bears are kind of trying to expose that weakness a little bit, uh, yeah. Komet's just not going to have the same target share that even he had, you know, in the last four games when he was right around 16%. So if that gets down into like the 10, 12% range, uh, I just don't see uh, enough happening except for, you know, like an explosive play where he's probably going to go over this number. So Okay. All right. Well, I haven't any time, and it's Let's not it. sexy. It's it. not sexy again, but That's it's what we there want. because these pit, everything is so weird on Monday. So I like Dalvin Cook. Uh, we talked about him before, but I do like Dalvin because, in case you missed it, he had a huge game last time: twenty-eight right. touches, two hundred and twenty-two yards, and two touchdowns. That's insane. Yeah. It's insane. I mean, so I don't know. Two hundred five rushing yards. Yeah, two touchdowns. It was uh, it was impressive. By far his impressive. best performance of the season for sure. So. Yeah. So I just I think they just they continue to feed him like you said because you don't we don't again we don't know too much about um, Thielen right now but in two games against the Bears last season he touched the ball sixty three times with two hundred and seventy one yards and a touchdown. So I just think it continues and I think it's too easy, um, especially with the way he's been playing recently. Uh, to not just sprinkle that in somewhere. There we go. I can get on board with that Thank quite a bit. You. I'm actually thankful too because we don't like, uh, we're not really on as under, you know, either yeah. as under rushing or as under rushing and receiving uh, yards from our player props tool. So uh, I like that one quite a bit. I do think, you know, okay. if if the Vikings get up early, he's going to be getting all the carries that he can handle. Yep. And again, that we'll see if, you know, if that, if that scenario plays out, if the Bears can kind of come back here and cover for us, that's my expectation. But uh, I do think that uh, the, the Vikings are going to utilize him heavily here again so on Monday night. So. Especially because the Bears defense has struggled with running, right. like with opposing backs. They, I think they ranked 22nd in DVOA against the run. Yeah, yeah, so we, have 20, yeah we, we have them at 20. Yeah, we have them at 26 in our opponent oh adjusted gosh, run defense worse. grade. So even, <laughs> even worse. Even so things you love to see, right? So <laughs> Right. Well, do you have any other props that you're maybe monitoring, ones that we're not going to say outright right now, but something you're monitoring before that game kicks off? Uh, I don't, not a ton. I will say one thing I am monitoring and betting is uh, Old Dominion here, uh, 2.30 Eastern kickoff, plus nine and a half. They have kind of been uh, my, you know, group of five team here throughout the 2021 season. I've covered for me on, I think, three or four separate occasions. So I'm riding, I'm riding with them uh, against Tulsa here, plus nine and a half. Uh, we show about 1.54% value on that number. So I think if you really want to get this Monday afternoon started right, (laughs) back old dominion here against Tulsa and we'll be we'll be happy then you won't even have to worry as much exactly. about you know this NFL action until we kind of get into the in-game uh betting market which is going to be probably the best way to approach approach Monday Night Football you'll be so. up already so there's no reason yes, full season. exactly exactly I love full season that's right. the best awesome awesome well Ben thank you so much as always everyone thank you so much for listening uh, you can find all our player props tools everything pff.com slash betting and good luck everyone